Okay, so I wasn't gonna do a video, but um, there are tons and tons of just little things going on in the garden. Um, so this may not be like a full garden tour, but just lots of things like changing and going on and things that are piquing my interest right now. And I just want to, after a busy Monday, sit out here, enjoy the space, kind of calm down at the end of a busy day and just show you guys some of the things that I find really interesting or things that are fun that are going on. So here we go. So the peas, or excuse me, the beans, these are those climbing ones. They are starting to put tendrils out. And so I have been wrapping them, kind of leading them up the space here because they'll be going up this wall. But yeah, they are growing big now. The peas got their second wind. Look at all of these blooms. I mean, there are just all these different shades and just beautiful. Look at those. I mean, I may want to grow these just because they're gorgeous. I mean, look at the varying shades on that. I mean, they're so stinking pretty. I mean, just beautiful. And then of course you've got the purple pods of the peas down in there. Now, some of these are starting to get peas in them. Like you can see it bulging just a little bit there. I've already popped one of them open and eaten the peas out of it this evening, or I would pop another one open and show you guys. Um, but yeah, so those are apparently the first round. There's gonna be many more. I mean, you see all the blooms all over us. I mean, because I had a round where my leaves were looking funky, and I think it's just they were getting wind burned, but them new growth sort of growing out. I mean, and all these are healthy, and they're obviously they're putting blooms on, and they're growing wild. Now, the radishes, I've been letting go to bloom, like this round of radishes, because I wanted to let them produce the little pods that they supposedly produce that are really tasty, but I've been enjoying... If I can find one. All the little pollinators on these. And I love the pink ones back there. That must be a different variety of radish. And obviously it never produced a bulb. So I don't know for sure like what that one was. Like to know. But yeah. Like look at the. Oh get it to focus. Look at the colors on that. Like it has just a touch of pink on the edges. And then when they open up. They turn into these, these pretty little white flowers. And I keep hoping that now that we're getting more and more of the little pollinators. That they will start producing the little pods that I want to try. And of course the sage is blooming out purple and beautiful. Now, the, if you noticed, the turnips are starting to look a little thinner. And that's because, especially out of this row, I took a bunch out yesterday and cooked a bunch of turnip greens and we cooked the turnips and we've still got a few in here. I'm trying to make sure I don't step on my purple basil that's down there. But we do have a few that are in here still that are growing. Um, I mean, you can see a few down in there that were buddies, but we're slowly thinning out this area and we'll be getting into more of this area over here. Now, a lot of this, the reason it's so thick is because I planted it more for greens, but they're also the white turnips and they're not producing a top for some, or like, or a bulb, excuse me, for some reason. And my little gateway out of there is filling up with peas. So I'm going to have to start like threading them back because <laughs> they're they're uh, going to be all over the place and blocking the way out. But yeah, let me go show you these. Oh, and these little jumping jacks, the violas, they are everywhere. Oh my goodness, they're everywhere. Um, I tried one of these for the first time because I had gotten a bunch of them and they were so good. Um, I want to put some in oil and do that. But look at this. They're all in there. They're finally, they're finally starting to do things. And then of course they're putting off more tendrils. So this, this whole space hopefully will be filled. This will be blooming before too much longer. They're producing the tops. And so there'll be tons and tons of white blooms. Now, obviously we've got acorn squash and there's powder and stuff on them because I've been dealing with cutworms and I'll show you the damage that a cutworm can do. You see how there are whole leaves just cut off. I mean, and this was the leaf. Like, it's dead now. It didn't even eat the leaf. Like, it just cut through it. And you see how both of those big leaves are cut off. Now, the plant's not dead. It's still producing leaves. But the the worm, like, cut the leaves off. And it will kill small plants. 
until they get to a certain diameter. And so we definitely, as a matter of fact, it took out the basil that was there and the basil that was down there because they were small plants. And so I put some down some, can't ever say it, it's D-E, um, diametric, um, uh, earth, I can't, it starts with a D, I can't ever say it correctly, but yeah, this is all the spaghetti squash, and the melons, oh my goodness, the melons are coming up, look at the little melons going down through there, and all the cucumbers are up, and then, of course, like, our two big ones that were ones that started in cups, but oh, let me show you the tiny things that I am excited about. Oh, where are they? Where are they? Oh. Right there. The first little tomatoes. Look at those cute little things. And this one is the Black Prince. This is a store-bought one. And I know I probably should have pinched the blooms off of it, but I didn't. Now, along those lines, the tiniest little ground cherries. Look at those. Which ground cherries you do not eat until this dries up and this thing falls onto the ground. And then that tells you that the fruit inside is done and good to eat. Because otherwise, I hear that there are some versions that could very well upset your tummy and be a little poisonous. So you don't want to be eating these green. They are cousin to the tomatillo, but they are not tomatillos. Um, you cannot eat them green like this. You gotta wait for them to dry up and fall off and be open. But yeah, I mean, and I put some DE on these as well because, I mean, these are coming back. Remember our one had just a single solitary leaf left? Look at him. He's a fighter. He's coming back. And then this one, they had eaten all his poor leaves off the bottom, but we've got new growth up here. So I'm hopeful. Um, and so I'm just kind of Oh, we'd ate that one too. I was trying to eat that one. But the big ones back there, they're all, I've been kind of breaking suckers off of some of them. And then, I've, so I've got a couple of suckers from that one and from that one that I'm going to put out. I've actually got to find a place for, but I haven't yet. But yeah, I'm just really loving all the teeny tiny things that are going on right now in the garden. I just love these things and it's kind of wishing and making me wish that I was here during the day when most of the pollinators are out um, to see you know all those things um, the rain gauge got a teeny tiny amount of rain um, yeah it's making me want to be there and see all the little bitty pollinators and all the things that are happy oh another thing it's amazing how much you can see in little spaces, like all the little spaces. Look at the red. I don't know if you can see it well in the picture. But look at the edges of the leaf. There is a, a red ring around the edges of the leaf. And I'm trying to show it to you. You can see it a little bit there, like turning it back and forth, you can see it. But speaking of, I mean, I have nasturtiums planted in like all the corners. But I also, like, I've got my first nasturtium bloom, and it's in the only one that has survived all the things. Only one that has survived everything. And it is blooming, and it is beautiful, and I love it. So I can't wait for all of them to get big, and for them to be all doing these things, and be blooming out beautiful everywhere. So, look at here. Oh, it's got a second bloom coming up now. And it might be loud, it's right here by the air conditioning. Look at that, and then it's got a second bloom. But yeah, supposedly you can eat the blooms, but I'm not because I want to enjoy its its beauty while it can. And of course the basil's that are in here. Like there's another nasturtium and basil. And I had planted this basil in the corner because I didn't think that nasturtium was coming up, and he was just late to the game. And then we have one flower that's decided to try to come up there, and another there. But things have been so in inconsistent in that that I have I've kind of given up on anything permanent being in it other than maybe basil so I can just rotate out but yeah speaking of the jumping jacks look at all those you cute little faces looking at us but yeah it's oh speaking of teeny tiny things looky here this is the jalapenos I can get a good picture look at that teeny tiny jalapeno Got one started, and there are 
blooms on these and I'm just I never pinch the blooms off the peppers I know that there are some people who do but I mean I've, I've never had an issue with it and never you know really seen a difference in it and so I'm just gonna leave them alone but looky here the little guy that can't get touched on he's trying to come back he's got some some healthy new growth there so I'm hoping he'll he'll survive and be okay yeah something broke a leaf off of that one and I'm still thinking kind of cut worms but I can't guarantee that that's what it is and then this is looking like slug damage again so I'm gonna put some more beer traps out I really just have no idea I mean look at this it, I mean it looks kind of like slug damage Ugh, little things little things slugs eating your kale that barrel is fixing to be completely different I'm fixing to tear all those things out and put more dirt in it and put more dragon tongue beans in it but yeah all the little things and I keep coming back to the cilantro back here because it's very much like a hedge and all the little like little pollinators and stuff that are on these like it's amazing what these little flowers and the life that they sustain and that they support speaking of do you see the little newsbee there he is look at that little newsbee isn't he cute and all the little things that's what i love coming out in the garden and doing is coming out here and finding these little things and watching them and enjoying their their little angst antics and there's a little oh there he is again i lost him oh focus on him focus out he's not gonna focus on him it's another little newsbee oh there he is but yeah all this all the things just a fun cutesy little video i think i need to pick some salad greens i don't know it was kind of sort of maybe what i might have been out here doing and then i kind of got sidetracked I even went and got a log of our fire pit and decided, or out of our stack, I decided I was going to put it in between the boxes underneath the trellis, kind of where my wind chime is, so I have a place to just sit. Because I was, while I was puttering around, there were birds that were um, coming and getting in the persimmon tree and just kind of hanging out with me. And it was just calming and relaxing and very meditative. I really I enjoy the space. Like once it's up and going, I can't wait till those trellises are full and it's just every day you walk out there and there's something new even now but it's going to be more so later on so i'll leave you guys alone and we'll get the salad greens together you know maybe put some together for lunch cook up some turnip, green, turnip greens and those kinds of things out of the garden and i think because trig's been we had a new schedule new doctor new things going on with him but he's been sleeping some and so we might come out here after the kids bedtime and have a fire and actually get to use my swing since it's not awful windy at the moment. We'll see you guys later. Bye.